surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and then I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. It's coming, you know. But until then, we got this house that we're sharing, and we've got your house. Those of you joining us through Church Online today, we invite God's blessing to touch every heart in every house as we make our prayer in Jesus' name, remembering, remembering that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. On this Veterans Day in the United States, we're remembering that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. May this nation know that blessing. Would God grant that every nation could know that blessing? And, uh, and in the midst, uh, and thank you to those who have served uh, in this nation's armed forces in the pursuit of justice and the pursuit of peace. We invite God's blessing upon every home and, and every heart, and we pray that our, the violence would soon end. L-O-V-E, let our violence end. Let's let God's love help us get there. If you join me in this prayer, would you say amen? Amen. 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 Nothing is too hard for God. We're remembering it. And as we remember that, we can say thank you. Thank you very much to the Lord. Today, we are powering up with Thanksgiving. This month, our new series and our last message, we saw that fresh power comes to life when we add faith to these words. Thank you. Thank you very much. And they are words that are so much more than simply manners or politeness. They are power words when, when connected with faith from the heart can get energized by faith. They have the power to bring you into the presence of God. We enter his courts with thanksgiving. We, uh, when we're surrounded by uh, enemy circumstance, we muster our soul's strength with thanksgiving. This is what we saw last time we were together, that there's the power to sustain you when you are facing conspiracies around you, that there is a power here to help you come home to God when you've been far from God. And if that's where you've been, may this be the day that your heart comes home to him so that you come a place where you just say thank you. Thank you very much. And what we also learned is that Thanksgiving, part of the language of Thanksgiving is the language of dignity and respect that creates community and promotes trust on a human level because uh, it's, it's our way of treating others with appreciation in light of the fact that they, they have gifts and they have grace that they have shared with others so that, and with, with us so that we can say thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, I bet you've experienced that somewhere in your life. If not, I hope that that'll happen soon. But when the power of gratitude, here's what happens. When the power of gratitude truly rises in the human soul, it shows up with words like this. I just, I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> how do I say thanks? Words don't seem to be enough. I just want to, I want to do something. You know what I'm talking about there? Thank you. Thank you so much. This sense that words really aren't enough. That's given rise to something that our culture calls paying it forward. You've heard this, responding to a kindness that you've received by being kind to someone else. A generous act sets in motion a series of emotions that then uh, give birth to being even more generous. You set something in motion. So Thanksgiving, here's what I'm trying to say, is connected to generosity in its DNA. Which brings us to the title for today's message. With thanks giving. Would you say it with me? With thanks giving. And this is the idea behind the talk today, that we are planting seeds from the harvest that you receive that will bring even more harvest as part of the ecosystem of gratitude. That's what I'm calling it. Now, you know you, how the over-the-counter medications, you go buy an over-the-counter drug, and you look on it, and every label has active ingredient. Doesn't matter what brand you buy, you look and you see, oh, same active ingredient. That's what matters, right? Did you know if, if uh, Thanksgiving had an active ingredient label on it, do you know what that active ingredient would be? I mean, no matter the shape or the form your Thanksgiving takes, 
I believe it, it would be generosity. Generosity is the active ingredient that powers thanksgiving. It initiates it, it empowers it, it energizes it, and then it multiplies it, so then it creates a harvest of goodness. Track with me? Good feelings, good vibes, good deeds, good results. More good comes of the good that's done. There's this life-generating power in generosity with thanksgiving to God. Gratitude and generosity are related. Psalm 50, verse 23 says it this way. He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me, God says, and then prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. You know, if you want to learn how to pray or take your devotional life to the next level, then the Psalms are the place to go. I just recently finished listening to the last 100 Psalms in my commute, playing the audio version, the U Bible, the U version audio Bible, um, over the past several weeks. And one of the, while I was listening, this verse jumped out at me, Psalm 50, verse 23. He who sacrifices thank offerings, makes gifts of thanks, participates in thanks, giving, honors me. And then God says he prepares the way for me to, to show up, show him the salvation of God. So giving thanks prepares the way for God to go to work in your life. It sets the stage. Is that what you see there? The Apostle Paul takes the same principle and he writes about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. From a personal experience, this is more, he states it in the personal experience as he's making his teaching. But um, I want to read the text, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 11. But don't stop listening until we get to the very end, okay? Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, not under compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Wow, that's a power verse. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor and the righteousness endures forever. There's the harvest. Now, and then Paul comes in for his point. Now, he who supplies the seed to the sower and the bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity, through us, your generosity will result in what? Thanksgiving. There it is. Gratitude is tied to Thanksgiving. I mean, to uh, generosity. Bam. It's like the, the secret of a life of harvest and fruit bearing, what we would call productive living, your best life, your most productive life, the scripture says, will be inseparable from Thanksgiving. This is how it works. And I'll show you. Here, here we go. God gives seed This is all by principle, okay? We're talking metaphor here. But out of the seed that's planted, then harvest will grow, and then as the harvest is gathered, then generosity results from a a good harvest and then issues forward into thanksgiving. That they're tied together in their DNA. And so what I think we're supposed to see is that generosity connects you to the life of God, the heart of God. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift who has brought this world and our lives into existence and put the ecosystem of generosity in place. And then he initiates it. He gives, and then we take those seeds, plant them, and then he brings the harvest into our lives, and then here's what he does. He said, now I want you to join me in the ecosystem of gratitude. I want you to take your seeds 
And then as you manage and steward and invest that harvest in a spirit of generosity, not a spirit of scarcity, not hard, but abundance is the word he uses in generosity, then those crops are going to yield. And then Paul says there are two purposes that, that those crops come into, uh, into being. The first one is for feed. He says there's going to be bread on the table. Your harvest will take care of you and keep you alive and provide for those you love. And seed. Seed and feed, both of them. Don't eat the seed. Eat the feed. Plant the seed. That's what he's trying to say. So don't eat the seed crop. Plant it through acts of generosity, and then more will continue to grow, and then God, you will be part of God's ecosystem of gratitude. This is God's plan, but this is not how the world system thinks, right? The world says, when I have more, then I'll give, right? God says, wait, when, when you give, then you will have more. This is his thinking he's inviting us into as part of the ecosystem of life-giving generosity. God says, receive, 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 and then give. And then you're gonna grow a crop and receive, and receive, and then give. This is the cycle of the life cycle of generosity. And what God is trying to show us that he did not design us to simply be consumers. That's part of it. You gotta eat the feed. There's going to be more than enough feed to cover, but you got to plant the seed. He wants us not to just be consumers, but also contributors. That we don't live to consume. The market thinks you do. But God, in whose image you are made, says, no, you are made to contribute and consume. It's a cycle. It is a circle. It's an ecosystem of gratitude. And then he wants us to grow to be like him. So God pours it on and raises up the crop. And then he says, now you join me in doing the same. Through your service, through your time, through your attitude, through your resources. Then take a piece of your crop. The majority feed. Then plant the seed so that it can produce even more. And then look what happens. This is verse 12. This service that you perform, that means when we find our place and do our part in this circle, the ecosystem of gratitude, it not only supplies the needs of the Lord's people, there's the feed, but it overflows in many expressions of what? Thanks. There it is. Thanksgiving. It's tied to generosity and receiving the gifts. And then he, it overflows into even more expressions. And then verse 15, he closes with this thought. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Indescribable. I don't have the words. How do I say thanks? I can't say thank you. I feel something that I can't. Thanks be to God. Indescribable gift. Now what gift? What gift's he talking about? In context, it's the gift of generosity. The gift that truly keeps on giving. So it's like God is saying, give. Give when you receive, give as you receive, give and you will receive. This is how it works. Jesus said this, give and it will be given to you. Right? He said that. He didn't say, now give so you'll get more and then hold all your stuff and hoard it. He didn't say that. He said, no, I want to introduce you to the ecosystem of gratitude. Give and you will receive. Generosity will issue forward in reasons for others to be grateful. Jesus said this to his men as they were going out on mission. Freely you've received. Freely. Now freely, give. Paul taught believers the same principle. In the first letter to Corinthians, and then he reminds them in the second letter here, he's, he taught them that to practice giving regularly, giving faithfully, giving thoughtfully, giving generously, and giving cheerfully. Did you see that in there? Giving cheerfully. Now that's something to blow your mind. The word translated cheerful, cheerful here is, is the Greek word hilaron, hilaron, from which we get the English word hilarious. Now there's a word we don't always associate with giving, <laughs> right? much less associated with funds or money or resources. We don't, we don't usually hear those put together, right? In, in Greek, it means, well, the English word now means extremely amusing, ha, ha, ha. 
The Greek word means joyful with no resentment. That's interesting. But what he's saying is there's an access point to a fresh emotion that gives life in this practice. In our culture, here's what we say, money talks. You heard that, right? I say, I know that's true. At my house, it talks all the time. Mostly it says, bye. (laughs) You know? It's like, see you later. I'm thinking, hilarious. (laughs) right? That's, that's what he says. Oh, there's the hilarious part, right? How do you get hilarious going on with, with money here? And it's like, okay, I'm at the end of the month. I got more month than money. Ha, hilarious. Ha, ha, ha. And you want to say this, you know, I'll tell you what's funny. It's the thought of me giving anything right now. And that's because we think like the world does. Now, this is going to be a step here for us. What does the world say? When I have more, then I'll give. What does God say? Let me teach you some new math. When you give, you'll have more. That's what the text is trying to invite us into. Imagine this. You know, when you give, you'll have more. Okay, so here's the question then. How do acts of generosity not just talking about funds, talking about attitudes and thoughts and kindness and words and deeds and, you know, how do acts of generosity actually engender more joy? How can I move from reluctance, being duty bound, to delight, to hilarious? And maybe you're thinking, like I do sometimes, you know, I don't need hilarious. I'd just be happy with less resentment. Let's just start there. Could I have less resentment when it comes to my resources and more joy? Maybe a little more joy is what God would have for you today. More joy is what God wants to bring to you as part of the ecosystem of gratitude. That's what this is teaching us. John Bunyan, author of the classic Pilgrim's Progress, wrote this, he said, there was a man, they thought him mad, (laughs) but the more he gave, the more he had. How does that work? This is a cheerful giver right here, you know? How, How do I get there? How do I cheer up like that and have less resentment and become more joyful in my generosity? And I'll tell you right up front, for me, it's always an act of faith. But here's what I see. I see myself stepping into my inheritance. We talked about God having an inheritance in the promised land. You remember that from our last series? And this is the way that we step into our inheritance by receiving the promise of abundance. God makes the promise of abundance in his word. And here it is, verse 8. This is one of the echoes of it that we read just a moment ago. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work so i trust in god's promise that that's true whether i've experienced it or not but i trust that and then i give by faith expecting him to provide what i require i plant the seeds trusting that a harvest will grow and then do it again now some weeks ago i gave a challenge some of you took me up on it I gave a challenge that maybe, you know, over the next 10-week period, you would take God at his word on this one and move into a step of percentage giving. You just start with 1%, and then in the next pay period, move to 2%. In terms of your tithe and offerings to God, your thank offerings. And then the next time, 3%, and go on up to 5%. And then here's what I said. Some of you remember this. If after 10 weeks, five pay periods, then you're not eating dog food under a bridge, then ask yourself, what's happening? Right? What's happening? And just ask yourself. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I've not received any phone calls from anybody which makes me think, well, God must be answering prayer. God must be providing. God must be meeting some people in some special way. In fact, I have had people talk to me about that, but not about missing out. And so um, I'm thinking, you know, here's what happens. At first, it's scary. 
makes your palms sweat and you don't fully understand it. And then what happens is God answers a prayer and you go, whoa, what was that? And then it's thrilling. It's like a roller coaster. When you get on it first, it's like, oh, and then when you go up, it's like, wow, this is, let's do it again. But always it's an act of faith for me when it comes. And then you're moved to say what? Thank you, Lord. You showed up for me. You, and, and that generosity generates gratitude, which then moves the desire to be even more generous. So here's the point. You want more joy in your life? Here's the teaching of Scripture. Here's the Word of God. Give. Now some of you are thinking, you know, I have been giving, you know, but it feels more like a duty than a delight. I relate to that. Lisa and I have those seasons. What do we do then? Well, think thanks. This is what we do. We think thanks about all that the Lord does for us, I do what the Lord does for me, I make a list. Get out a list, you count your blessings. Don't number your burdens just yet, just count your blessings. Put, get out a sheet and start enumerating everything that the Lord has done for you and you make a list and you look at that list and see if it brings you joy. It brings me joy. I said, whoa, this, this is a good list. And then, looking at that list, we think about the difference, Lisa and I, that our gifts are making for other people. That some of the benefits that are coming to other people's lives because of our gifts. And that brings me joy. It's another, oh, I've got to add some joy to my life. And then I reflect upon the good things that we enjoy because of the seeds that somebody else planted. And it occurs to me that many of the, the uh, so much, there are so many of those in my life, that right now we're sitting under the shade and eating fruit from trees that we did not plant. But somebody else's seed planted those trees and now we're benefiting from them. And then as I think about that, then I start imagining what it would be like to do that for somebody else. Because the people that did this for me weren't thinking about me necessarily, and I don't have to know who it is, but as I give, others might also experience that blessing, and so I think about being a part of doing that for others, and then that kicks me into another level of faith, like imagine the future with the eyes of faith that the seeds that we plant are gonna produce even more crops, not just feed, but seed. And then I remembered this. I mean, in preparation for this talk, I remembered this saying that someone said, you know, anyone can count the number of seeds in an apple. God counts the number of apples in a seed. This is the new math. Did you know the average apple has five seeds? Five seeds. The average tree in a single season will produce 300 apples. Do the math, 1,500 seeds. 1,500 seeds. Now those 1,500 seeds will then potentially produce 450,000 apples. When you multiply the 300 toward all those trees that each one of those seeds could grow, and then those apples will provide, those apples will provide another 2,250,000 seeds. This is abundance. Where did that come from? God who made us. God who gives us gifts. And each one of those seeds can then produce another tree. Oh, my goodness. And then the cycle continues. And so I'm looking at this, and the question that's rising for me is, what am I doing with my seeds? What are you doing with your seeds? We start giving cheerfully when we start thinking carefully with gratitude, with thanksgiving. This is how the joy begins and continues. And then that thanksgiving, then we find our place and do our part in the ecosystem of gratitude. This is God's design. And then as we take action and we plant the seeds that we have, the seeds, not the feed, eat the feed, eat the feed, eat the feed. Take care of your loved ones with all the feed, but don't eat the seed. Plant the seeds because then more crops will grow and God will teach you some new math. That when we give, 
we connect dynamically with the ecosystem of gratitude that God has built into this world. And then that's when you discover in your experience, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is a power verse. And, and then, yeah, I know, it's like, I don't know if I'm gonna clap for that. Somebody's gonna see me and then, but here's the next verse. You will be enriched in every way. In case we missed it, Paul says you'll be enriched in every way. Why? So that you will be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in what? Thanksgiving. See how it works? This is like when you're moved to say thank you, what that means is that somebody has been generous to you. Now, in our culture that's so enlightenment-driven, we think, I mean, not enlightenment, entitlement. Would that God enlighten us about this. Entitlement thinking says, no, I, I deserve that. You owe me. I have expectations. I have special privilege. And it robs us of the joy of gratitude. So when we stop saying thank you, then we stop feeling grateful. And when we stop feeling grateful, we start hoarding the seeds and saying, I got to have more. I got to have more. That builds greed. And greed does this. And God says, that's not how I am. That's not how my people are. That's not what I want for you. We start giving cheerfully as we think carefully. Not just status quo, not just business as usual. But we stop and think about thanks and what it means. This is the why behind the what of our giving. So that through our giving, others will meet Christ and say what? Thank you, God. Thank you very much. I, I, I don't have any words. I don't know what to say. I just feel like I need to, to do something. You see where that's coming from? And then what is it that God says that he wants us to do? He says, join the life-giving ecosystem of gratitude and generosity, and gratitude and generosity, and let's keep it going. It's God's love rising in your soul. And then as Amy Carmichael, great missionary lady, she discovered this in her Christ journey. She says, you know, you can give without loving, but it's impossible to love without giving. John 3.16 nails it for me, for God so loved, that he kept it all for himself, that he gave. This is at the heart of our salvation. One more thought, okay, what about those of us who are thinking, well, what if it's not happening for me? It's not happening for me. What if it doesn't happen for me? You know, what about me? I, in seasons like that, I know about that. I don't like them, but what I've discovered is that God is faithful in them. If I will be faithful to him in them, God will be faithful to me through them. God is faithful, and we can trust him. And if I stay faithful, I will experience his goodness in good time. Good feelings, good vibes, good results that issue into good deeds that create more gratitude because of the generosity that just got exchanged. Have you let God love you? That's where it begins. His heart is at the heart of the universe. His heart is behind the way these laws were built into our ecosystem. And these, these laws are his spiritual ecosystem for you as well. Have you let God love you? That's where it begins. Have you let God's gift of Jesus Christ bring you the quality of life that never unlives, it just keeps living. Have you let God forgive you freely and then lift you from guilt and shame and bring healing and hope and help into your life? Receive, 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 keep receiving and then pass it on and then pass it on. That's where it begins. 
by receiving. Receive the gift of salvation by faith. You don't earn it. You can't deserve it. But God says, I want you to have it. And so I'm going to give it. How generous he is. And then he pours it on and then allows us to accept it by faith. How do you accept it by faith? You could pray a prayer like this. Lord, if you want me to have it, then I want me to have it too. (laughs) Right? This is a good prayer. God, if you want me to have it, then I want me to have it too. That's where it starts. And then you say, I want me to have Jesus Christ as my life-giving Savior. I want to turn away from my greedy ways, and I want to turn learning how to plant seeds. I want to walk with you as my Lord and follow you as you fill me with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. If you prayed that prayer with me just then, then I'm going to invite you to pray with me now as we bow our hearts together, our heads together for a second. And um, Lord Jesus, come into my life the seed of God's life planted in me through the power of your grace and Holy Spirit that you would grow in me and produce a great crop through me that could multiply that grace into other people's lives. So here's the prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. I'm turning from my way to learn to go your way. I receive you as my Savior. I want to follow you as my Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you so very much. Our heads bowed just for a moment longer, but if you prayed that prayer with me and would let me ask God's blessing upon your next steps of faith, would you simply raise your hand, hold it up for a little while so I can see and thank you, thank you, thank you here in the middle, thank you in the back on my left against the wall to my left. God bless you, thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Lord Jesus, for each person by uplifted hand who has said, I'm making room in my heart for God's seed to be planted in me that could bring life of grace and forgiveness in me. Lord, I pray that they would sense your presence right now, the fresh peace that passes understanding, the grace that keeps pouring it on, and the joy of their salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray, amen.